Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. When you found that you will discover these words. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is worthy, weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall ultimately fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. God, we magnify you. We glorify you, Lord. Lord, we praise you, Father, for you are good and you are God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another privilege. Lord, we don't take for granted this another chance. Lord, we honor you this morning for another opportunity, Lord. Lord, you blessed us again. God, you kept us one more time. Lord, you kept us on this side of the grave. And for that, Lord, we're thankful. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we praise you. God, we welcome you this morning. We know you all places at the same time. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to see your presence. Manifest yourself in this place. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us to feel your presence. That you will burn on the heart of our hearts by way of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray, Father God, that we move because of your presence. That you, Lord God, will rule and super rule. Lord, we thank you for being in the building. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to be in your presence. Now, Lord, we realize that we fall short. We realize, Father God, that we are not who we ought to be. We realize, Father God, that you are God and you're God alone. We ask you, God, to forgive us. Don't hold our sins against us, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you remove our state of mind that we will move toward you. Bring our hearts in, bring our minds in, bring our attention in, Father God, that we will see you as God. Lord, we ask you to bless the service. We ask you to bless every participant. We ask you to bless every person that will speak, every person that will sing, every person that will say hallelujah to your name. And for that, Lord, we thank you for just being able to, to honor you as our God. Lord, we thank you for just being able, Father God, to raise our voices. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us another chance to Praise your name. Lord, it's an honor. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you rule and super rule in this service. That we will leave here better than we were when we got here. That life will roll on just a little while longer. That we and we, the boys and girls, will see that our lights are shining. Not that they will glorify us. But that they will glorify you, God, the Father in heaven. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. And Lord, we pray. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen.
Celebration 2022. One may ask, why celebrate Black History? We celebrate Black History to honor the contributions and sacrifice of African Americans who have helped to shape the nation. It was Carter G. Woodson, the father of Black History, who first set out in 1926 to designate a time to promote and educate people about Black history and culture. There is no African history without African American history, said Sarah Clark. And in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., almost always the creative, dedicated minority has made the world better. First on our Black History program, we will have Braylon Bird with a speech titled, The Value of Being a Black Man. society views the black man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are murderers, liars, rapists, yeah. thieves, drug dealers, and drug users. Well, the list goes on and on of how negative the black man looks in the eyesight of the media. It is hardly a review of the good that the black man has contributed in shaping this city, <coughs> this state, this country, mm -hmm. this world. The black man holds great value on unlocks windows and even doors to sights unseen. The black man is more than a ball handler or an entertainer. Mm -hmm. We are more than the swag that we possess or that nice car that we drive. The black man is more valuable than that. We are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, authors, entrepreneurs, ministers, community leaders, activists, senators, mayors, and governors. And just a few years back, Barack Obama opened a door where we could all hold position like the one he held. Yes. President of the United States. Yes. We are doctors, lawyers, teachers, mentors, motivational speakers, artists, first responders, uncles, brothers, and fathers. We as black men are fortunate to have the formula of being a valuable black man. The blueprint that is before us can take us as places unimaginable and evoke change along the way. We as black men sit on the shoulders of brothers like John Robert Lewis, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, and President Barack Obama. Let us not forget the young black men that did not know their names will one day pave the way that will lead us to the halls of justice and right that demand equality. Names like Trevon Martin, Tamir Rice, yeah. Alton Sterling, Michael Brown, Emmett Till, Amon Aubrey, and George Floyd. The blood, the blood that pumps in our veins is rich and thick and is most importantly valuable. I came to remind you from one black man to another mm -hmm. that you are not a liar, neither are you a thief. Mm -hmm. You are not a rapist, nor are you a murderer. Brother, you are not a drug dealer or a drug user, for the value that you possess is far too great. Black man, you are valuable. You are worthy of great success with mountains of possibility. We as black men should we should never let our story be told by someone who knows nothing of our struggle our history, or our purpose. Amen. We, we must tell our own stories and erase the negative stereotypes that interfere with our prospering in this land flowing with opportunity. We must recognize our flaws and seek out ways to correct our wrongs and be examples to our young brothers mm -hmm. that need the guidance and knowledge that promote change for the generation and generations to come. We must never forget our value of being a black man. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> The Value of a Black Man was written by Hazel Carter and Kimberly Carter. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. Next, we will have a poem titled, My Black is Beautiful, by Hazel Carter. Today I'll be performing My Black is Beautiful. 
All right. From the color of my skin, to the texture of my hair, to the length of my strands, to the breadth of my smile, to the stride of my gait, to the span of my arms, to the glow of my skin, my black is beautiful. Yes. It cannot be denied, nor will it be contained, and only I will define it. For when I look in the mirror and see what God has created in me, my very soul cries out, my black is beautiful. Yeah. And so today, I speak it out loud, unbashedly. I declare it anew, my black is beautiful. Whether celebrated, imitated, exploited, denigrated, whether naturally inside or skillfully applied, my black is beautiful. Mm -hmm. To my daughters, my sons, my sisters, my brothers, my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, my colleagues, and my friends, I speak for all when I say, my black is beautiful. Thank all right, you. all right. Well done. Now we will have our MC instrument ensemble. They will perform, We Shall Overcome. Danielle Ayoton will be on the flute. Ashley Orr and Carolyn Davis will be on the saxophone. And Sophia Galvin will be on the piano.
scriptures are songs that come from deep in the heart. They are often songs of pain, but they are also songs of hope. Spirituals come from a people who are sold into slavery. People who even in their pain made something beautiful. The Embassy Choir will sing two spirituals, Certainly Lord and Sweet Low, Sweet Chariot.
understand as we welcome our pastor and we get our heads and hearts ready and listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. found that you will discover these words. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city and we shall die there. If we say, if we sit here, we should die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall only die. And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. 
And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one of the tents and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Hmm. Then they came back and entered another tent, and carried from there also, and went and hid it. I want to talk about choices of life and death. All right. Choices of life and death. Choices. In this life, we all have choices. That's right. And I've come to the conclusion even babies have choices. If you don't think babies have choices, just let one start crying. <laughs> Parents, get up and walk around. Feed the baby. Change the baby. Clothe the baby. Even little bitty babies have choices. Amen. So all of us have the choice today whether to live mm. or to die. Yes, sir. As we celebrate this African American heritage, yes, sir. as we celebrate black history, yes, sir. there are those who have gone before us, yes. have made choices, and those choices were life and death choices. They said we can sit here and just relax and just take whatever is given to us. Uh -huh. And at that time, nothing was given. That's right. We can sit here and die. We can sit here and just create history and say we came, we lived, and we died. Mm -hmm. But we understand there are many black Americans, yes, sir. many African Americans, many Negroes, who have come before us yes, and they made a world of difference. All right, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they fought to vote. Yes, they cried to make a difference. Mm -hmm. They died making a difference. Yes, yeah. You see, we sit in a place of ease. Right. We have jobs that we didn't work for. Yes, we have food we didn't have to buy. Yes, it's because God unctioned somebody to go in to the city. Amen. When we look at the text, we look at the text, we find we find leprous yeah. men. Right. The text declares that there are four lepers, and they were looking for food because if you read verses one and two right before this text, you will find out that Elijah predicts that there will be cheap food. Mm -hmm. But when you have no money, it doesn't matter how much it costs. Right. Let, let me just share with you. Let me just share with you. When the storm won't serve you, right. it doesn't matter how much money you have. That's right. There are those who have gone before us who couldn't go through the front door. Yes, Lord. And then they got dangerous service going through the back door. Yes. There are those who come before us who couldn't drink where they wanted to drink. Couldn't use the restroom they chose to use. That's right. yes. But they lived a choice of life and death. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you, young people, young people, what you have now, people paid with their blood, sweat, and shit, and tears right. in order to get right. right. When we look at the text, we find these four lepers. The text declares leprous men. 
You see, lepr leprosy was an awful disease. It was an incurable disease. It was a disease that no doctor even wanted to deal with. If you had leprosy, they would put you out in, away from town. Away from the crowd. You will be in a concentration camp where there's nothing but more and more lepers. Because leprosy broke out on your body all over from head to toe. And your fingers and your arms and your legs will begin to rot away. Leprosy was one that did not allow you to come to church service. Because you would have to cry out before you get to the front door, unclean, unclean. I think it's a shame that we have people today who, who don't have leprosy. Who the people they go around don't have leprosy. But they've decided not to show up. They've decided that they can sit in one place and we can suffer the consequences. When we look at the text, the, 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 the lepers have some choices to make. Yeah. They are outside of the camp. They have no food. All right. They have no leader. They have no medical treatment. But they know in the city, if we go in, we can get something to eat. Mm -hmm. right. Well, there are some conditions there. There are some conditions there. And the conditions are, first of all, if we stay here, we're going to die. Yes, sir. I didn't know they were going to die. They had no food. How did they know they're going to die? Because no one was serving them. Right. How did they know they didn't die? Because uh, I, what is it called? I have a cart. Was not Uber Eats. Was nowhere around. Right. You see, during the pandemic, we could call up folk. Uh -huh. And they would at least drop it off on the gas. Uh -huh. They would at least put it on the porch. Uh -huh. yeah. We could call the doctor and the doctor would have the medication delivered, delivered to us. But these lepers. Right did not have any delivery agency. UPS didn't pull up. Ferry Express didn't show up. They were isolated on their own little temporary place and they were there to die. Let me just share with you, young people, young people, let me just share with you, we look at the 1960s and I tell you today, we're right back where we are we were in the 60s right. and even worse. Right. 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 We got computers, we got technological advancements, we, we have iPads, we have phones, even the two-year-old has a phone, but we are in a worse condition yes. than Big Mama was in the 60s. Yes. Because you are not in slavery, they say, but you have chosen to live in this life of slavery that operates the slavery system with an ink pen and a computer. Be, be conscious, be conscious, be wise, be aware that, that it's not the color of your skin that's the sin. It's because you have made a choice just to sit here. Yeah, yeah. Just to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So the lepers began to have counsel beyond in, in the midst of themselves. And, and they thought of a promise beyond where they were. Young man, young girl, there's a promise beyond where you are. There's something that you can see. There's something that you can do. You have the choice of to let others invent or you become an inventor. You have a choice of, of speaking up or speaking out or not speaking at all. You have a choice of keeping silent when it's the right time to keep silent or you have a choice to speak out of time. The leopard has choices. The lepers have the choice. The first choice, we can just sit here like we are. We're going to die anyway. And somebody in this room may have come to the conclusion, I'm not going to do any more than I've been doing. I'm not going to do any more education. I'm not going to participate on my job. I'm not going to look for any advancement. I'm just going to sit here until my time is up. People are waiting. People are waiting. They're just sitting. And it doesn't matter if you're unemployed. It doesn't matter if you're retired. It doesn't matter if you just resign or not. The fact that the matter is your blessing is in front of you. Yes. I'm so glad. I'm so glad Brother Miles brought this point out. This point out this morning. He said that this is not a name and a claim game. I know that's right. This is not a pie and a sky situation. This is this is not where you you prophesy and things happen. Let me tell you, if you're going to get the best blessing from God that you are looking for, which you are looking, let me share with you. You have to do something. 
Young men, young men sell drugs. Young girls do prostitution. Young people uh, go by and do do sex changes and all of these things. Think it's going to get things better for them. But the fact of the matter is, if God is not included in your plan, your plan becomes a disastrous plan. All right. So, so they said, well, we can just sit here and die. We're lepers. They had come to the point where they had to choose between the blessings of God and a pity party. My question to you today, have you chosen the pity party? No. Have you chosen to just sit there and complain about all you're going through? Baby, if you only knew what I was going through, that's how the pity party starts. Yeah, yeah, and it right. ends with somebody sitting and listening to your pity party. Let me tell you, everybody in this room, everybody listening to me, are they going to something and going right. through something. That is right. I'm telling you, we're going through something. In the 21st century, we're going through something. And there is not one person who really got it going on. We're going through something. Skyrocketing inflation. Dads, I mean, now you've got to determine whether you're going to go to church or go to work. I know that's right. But, the, but, the, but, but the, the pandemic showed us all the places we used to go. We really didn't have to do that. All the things we used to do. All the places we used to eat. We really didn't have to do it because the pandemic shut everything down. So we have choices to make. Do we sit here and know we're going to die? Do we sit here and, and just let them, let, let this leprosy pick us off one, two, three at a time? Or do we get motivated? Let me just say to you today, blessings don't come when you're reacting. Mm -hmm. Blessings come when you're proactive. Mm -hmm. you, 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 can't, you can't get blessed just by reacting to any and everything because you become a swinging pendulum. Mm -hmm. And every time something happens, you react to it. Every time somebody says something, you react to it. You know, folks have fallen out because somebody looked at them the wrong way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Folks have fallen out because somebody said something to them just one time. People have fallen out simply because somebody did not give them a promotion that they deserve. So I declare I'm going to sit here, Brother Carter, and I ain't going to do nothing else. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show them. The lepers had a choice whether just to sit there and back or to go into the city. Let, let me just share with you. Let me share, you, share with you. There are blessings in front of you. God, God, God is able to bless you if, if you just let him. But you have to participate in his blessings. They ask the question, should we just sit here and die? And then another brother spoke up and he said, well, if we go into the city, they're going to kill us. If we go into the city, our, our enemies are in the city. If we go into the city, not only will we die here, but we go into the city, we're going to die in there. Another brother speaks up and says, well, if we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in now and we turn ourselves over and surrender to the Syrian army, we're going to do nothing but die only. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, but just, just think about it. If we go in and we surrender to them, at least we'll have some need. He said, he said, he says, if we go in and we surrender unto them, they can't do anything to us but kill us. If we sit here, nothing's going to happen, but we're going to die. If we go in, the people will kill us. If we sit here, the disease will kill us. I just come to the conclusion that I want to make something happen. As long as God is leading me, I want to make something happen. So the story goes on and says, at twilight, they decided to go into the city. At twilight. Some people, some people would have missed it. Some people couldn't do it. Some people would have just sit there and die because if the leader of the group said, we're going to leave at twilight, I, I can't make it, brother. I mean, that's, I'm not a morning person. For some folks, 
Some folk, some folk, folk can, can say, now, if you make it 12 noon, I can go into the city. But at twilight, the Bible says, at twilight, they got up and they moved into the city. At twilight, some, somebody would have been, somebody still would have been out of there. But at twilight, and look what God does. God options them to move at twilight. God enables them to move into the city and they had a choice to stay, but he enabled them to move into the city. Let me tell you, when you have contact with God, God will show you when, God will show you where, God will show you how, and God will bless you in the midst of it. The Bible says, the Bible says right here, it says, it says at twilight, they, they moved out and they went into the Syrian Syrian city, and when they got there, after they had their little discussion, when they got there and decided we're going to go into the camp at twilight, the so verse 5 says, and they arose at twilight. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me just share with you, sometimes you got to arise. Yes, sir. Sometimes you got to get up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sometimes you don't deserve to sleep. I mean, people, people big on that thing, you know. They believe I just deserve to relax today. Other people are making things happen, and you're relaxing. I told you before, you're getting 10 hours of sleep. You're sleeping too much. That's right. Mm. No, that's right. 10 whole hours, I don't know when I got 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> Raise your hand if you got 10 hours of sleep. It's last night. So Paul, you should have gotten up out of that bed. Ten hours of sleep. Ten whole hours. Don't you know victories have been achieved in those ten hours? Don't you know situations have changed in those ten hours? Don't you know another wrinkle has shown up in those ten hours? Don't you know bills have been paid in those ten hours? Ten whole hours of sleep. The text says, the text says, they got up, they rose, they got up, they moved, they got up, they positioned themselves to go in and live. There are people in this world who have come to the conclusion that I am just going to sit here and die. They don't have leprosy. They just have low self-esteem. Somebody has told them they're not good for anything. Somebody has told them, you see, when I leave you, you're not going to be fit for anything. <laughs> Somebody has told them that you are a leftover. Somebody has told them that you are damaged good. Let me tell you, God takes care of damaged good. God is able to take the God is able to take the worst of things and make the best of things. Let me just share with you. If God wasn't able to take the worst of things and make the best of things, I wouldn't be standing here today. Right. But it's because of God's amazing grace. It's because God has blessed me in spite of me. In spite of my condition, in spite of who I was born to, in spite of whether or not I was born to a single parent home or not, God has blessed me. Whether I grew up on a plantation or not, God has blessed me. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, if I had to go and come back again, and I know there's no things, no such thing as a reincarnation, but if I had to go and come back again, I'd be born and reared on four mile plantation in the backwoods of Indianola, Mississippi, <laughs> right between Indianola okay. and Mills. Okay. Because I learned so much there. I learned how to get up and go get it there. Five o'clock in the morning, before school time, we got to flock the hall. The hog eat before we eat. And you go to school, smell You can't wash that stuff off. But the good thing about it, everybody smells the same way. You can go in after you slot the hog and go back and take a shower, take a bath, take a, take, take a number three tub and walk around in it as long as you want to. The fact that it matter is, you still got that smell on you. But everybody just showed up. In the fifth grade, was walking down the hallway smelling just like all <laughs> Because you couldn't get the smell off you with just one watch. Uh -uh. Let me just share with you. Don't consider who you were born to. Don't consider 
where you were born. Just consider the fact that we have an awesome God. He is an awesome God, and he's able to do anything he chooses to do when he wants to with anybody he chooses to do. So they began. They began to go into the city. They got up. They went into the city. And the Bible says, look, look, look what it says. The Bible says, to their surprise, verse number five, to their surprise, when they got to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. God knows how to move your enemies on down the road. Yes. God, God knows how to protect his own. God, God knows how to even speak to your enemies on your behalf. You're worried about cussing it out. You're worried about fighting it out. You're worried about duking it out. God just moves them out. God has a way of moving them. God has a way of moving them out of your way. God has a way of moving mountains. God has a way of moving valleys. God has a way of making crooked places straight. God has a way of blessing you. You just trust God. Yes, yes. Are you going to do it on your own? Or are you going to trust God? Trust God. Are you going to trust what God is trying to do in your life? God, will, God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. God has heard every single prayer you have prayed. Yes, you. God has seen every single tear you have, you have cried. Yes. God has not forgotten you. Let me tell you something about the leper. In this leper camp, history will reveal there was more than four lepers in the camp. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let me just park right here and let you know, on your way to your blessings, everybody won't go with you. Mm -hmm. yes, that's what everybody, everybody, everybody won't go with you. Right. On your way to your blessings, God does have a blessing with your name on it. God does have a blessing that fits no one but you. God does have a blessing that he's washing it over and over just for you. Stop going and picking up jokers that look like they just clam out from under a rock. Just wait on God. Everybody that comes your way is not for you. Watch it, watch it, watch, watch God. Watch what God is doing around you. Be sensitive to what God. You want to take your cousin everywhere you go. You want to take your buddy, your friend, your dog. You want to take everybody everywhere you go. God, you can't take everybody to the blessings of God. Some blessings they can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job, Job's friends, in, in the Sunday school lesson, Job has some friends. And they were his friends until the things got thin. And then those same friends, I'm sure, had promised Job, Job, I'm with you through thick and thin. Yeah. But the moment boys came upon Job, the moment Job's wife turned her back on him, the moment Job lost his children and his houses, the moment Job lost, Job lost his livestock, guess what happened? His friends began to turn on him too. Say, come on, Job. This, this is how they begin. This, this is how they talk. Come on, Job, you tell me. Let me tell you, the next person that, that tell you that you can tell them, don't tell them anything. Don't. Oh, come on, you, you know, we, we like that. We buddies, we friends. You can tell me. You, because the moment you tell them, they're already typing on Twitter. The moment you tell them, they're already texting their best friend. Let me tell you, your best friend has a best friend. And your best friend, to you, it, it may not be your best friend, his, his or her only best friend. And your best friend will go tell your best, her best friend or his best friend. Say, you know, girl, I'm just going to tell you. I ain't going to tell nobody else. But you might as well have got a megaphone. And stood on the parking lot of the Walmart. And just announced it to everybody. Simply because there are people that don't even like where you're headed. When you're going to get your blessing, they don't even like that you're going to get your blessing. They don't get, as long as you ride metro, they satisfy, they're your friend. Right, right. As long as you're working, working in the same department they're working in, they're your friend. Yeah. Yeah. But the moment you get a real blessing, the moment you get promoted, they'll say, everybody can't do it. You need to tell them, you're right, baby, everybody can't do it. Yeah. Only us who walk with the Lord who can do things like this. Yeah. Yeah. God is opening doors for us, and we turn to hang out with the bomb. We're trying to hang out with those who are going nowhere. That's right. 
right. And you can always tell people who are going nowhere because of their conversation. Because of their attitude, yes. because of their lifestyle, yes. you have to be diligent on what you do. All right now, you have to walk. If you're gonna get a degree, you gotta stay on top of it. Stay on it. I'm not talking about an honorary doctor's degree. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about an honorary master's degree. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a degree where you have to sit up to six a.m. from six a.m. the other night, mm -hmm. from six a.m. the other morning. From 6 a.m. another night. 6 a.m. another. I'm telling you when you don't see the bed for four hours a day. Yeah. And they want to talk about, oh, uh -huh. you, you got that title here yeah, I work for. Mm -hmm. And it's not anything to brag about. It's just simply that you have to work for your blessings and watch what God does. That's right. You have to work for it. You have to put in the work. Young people, there are no quick fixes. Mm -hmm. There's no quick money. There's no quick enjoyment. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy it for a moment, but then the devil will snatch the rug out from under you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so look at the text. The text says, the text says, the text says they, they were surprised mm -hmm. when they got to the outskirts. They didn't even get there. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't even ride, arrive and put their feet on the, on, on the campground. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, before their feet struck the ground, mm -hmm. while they were yet on the outskirts, of the camp. Let me tell you, God can show you your blessing a long way off, and you can act like you don't see it in this city. That's right. God can show you property that you ought to have. God can show you people that's going to bless you, and you can act like you don't see it. God can put you in the middle of stuff. I'm going to tell you something. When, when you're about God's business, and when you're making choices for God, God will put a person in your place for just a moment. God will put the right supervisor there just to promote you. And two days after you that supervisor promotes you, guess what? That supervisor retired and don't nobody be. God will place people in your path to bless you. You got to make sure you hear from the Lord. The, 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 text, the text of class, the text of class that, that they had the right attitude. Look, look at what it says. It says, it says in verse number six, for the Lord has called had called the army of the Syrians to hear the noise. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It doesn't even have to be real. Mm -hmm. But God will make the enemy hear noises. Yes, yes, yes. Have you ever heard people say, I got something going on in my head. Now they're there to destroy you. They're there to turn you off. They're there to reject you. Let me tell you, God will allow them to hear some noise that they cannot sustain themselves. God, God, I told you, I told you before, I, I, I looked to, to apply for an instrumentation, technician position, and, and the, the big wig, the, the, the supervisor, the manager sent a supervisor to me on night shift, mm. where it's quiet and I could hear his voice and he could hear my voice. Mm. And young people, you have to learn how not to talk all over yourself. Right. Let them talk. The more you listen, the more you will understand. It. The, the more you listen, the more they will tell you. And the more you listen, the more the enemy will tell you of his or her plan. And so I just sit there, and they said, son of Bowman down to the plan. And I was just sitting there, and he was talking, and he said, look, man, you might as well not apply for that instrumentation position. Mm -hmm. Simply because that job is written, the whole description is written with Scott Stein's name on it. He said everything about that position has everything about Scott Steins on it except his hair color. Mm -hmm. What he was telling me was, I'm the wrong color. That's right. That's right. What he was telling me was, that my color is the wrong hair color when I had hair then. He said, your hair color is different from Scott Steins' hair color. What he was doing was calling me a nasty name. That's right. That's right. I could have blown up on him. I could have fouled on him. But my concentration was to get that position. And I couldn't let him sideswipe me. I couldn't let him get me off focus. And so he said, you need to take your name out the hat because you're going to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I said to him, well, next week I got an interview. Mm -hmm. And he, he said to me, yeah, yeah we're giving you an interview because we just have to give you one. And then you need to take your name. Well, first of all, if I didn't have a chance, he didn't have to come talk to me. Oh, that's right. That's right. Let me tell you, people will try to get you to stop and blockade your blessings when they know that your blessing is on the way. Right. 
Let me tell you your blessing is in front of you. Your blessing is it's not behind you, it's not beside you. Your blessing is in, in front of you. So he told me to take my name out the hat, and my only statement to him, and young people, you don't have to go tip and tap to anybody. You always have to be respectful because you will need your enemies later on. That's right. So I said to him, well, let's just see what God has to say about it. And I said, this meeting is over. Mm -hmm. I went to the interview. I was awarded the job. And guess what? I'm the first and the last because after I left, they closed the whole party down. <laughs> I tell you, I'm the first and the last. I have made history. I'm the first and the last. And then when I moved to another job, I was the only one there. Yeah. I was the first and I was able to open up doors for other engineers that looked like me. You have, to, you have to move with intentions. You have to move with, with value. You have to move like you're somebody. And you have to move like the God you serve can motivate you and promote you. But you can't do that when you're down and out on yourself. We get so caught up into what we look like. Don't you know when you were born, God knew what you're going to look like? He, he knew it. I mean, I mean, girl, you better do your thing. Brother, you better do your thing. Let me tell you something. I want to let you know that other folks are paying a lot of money to look like you. All right, now, Other people are getting injections to look like you. And you let them call you a color. You let them talk about your skin too dark. You let them talk about your lips too big. And boom, your butt out is too huge. Let me tell you, they're getting injections. In order to look like you, they're getting injections to look like you. They pay money to look like you, and here you are. Oh, I gotta change this. I gotta change this. Let me tell you, you get plenty of sleep. Not ten hours. You get plenty of sleep. You do your exercise. You eat right. You talk to God about it, and if you still the same, that's how God made you. That's right. And that's how he makes you. I mean, every chance, every chance Sister Davis' family and Sister Davis' friends look at me, every chance they get, they say, let them be here. It's all right. God made this head this way. <laughs> and I'm all right with it, Sister Man. I'm all right with it. Because I know that not only did God make the shape of it, but he put something in it. <laughs> the problem is, some people got pretty hair and nothing is in it. Some people got good heart and nothing is in it. Look at the text. The text of class. The text of class, they, they came to the conclusion in verse number six. They, they heard a noise. They left the chariot. They left the horses. Look at it. It says they heard the noise of chariots. They heard the noise of horses. They heard the noise of a great army. And they came to the conclusion that God had employed, God had employed the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us. Let me tell you, whenever you walk with the Lord, whenever you talk with the Lord, whenever you have the personality and other folks see your light shining with the Lord, even your enemies will recognize that you've been with the Lord. Yeah. Your enemies, your enemies will say, and not only did they say that they've been with the Lord, they said the Lord is fighting their back. Mm -hmm. He said the Lord has employed them. The Lord has gone and gotten the Hittites. The Lord has gone and gotten the Egyptians. And the Lord has employed them to attack us. Mm -hmm. hmm. My next point to you is, the Lord will make your enemies see things that are not there. That's right, that's right. Just in order to bless you. Yes, Lord. The Lord, the Lord will make your enemies hear things when there's not a noise. Mm -hmm. There were no chariots. There were no horses. There were no donkeys. But they heard it. And they came to the conclusion that, that the Lord has, has got them to do it. He says, therefore they arose and fled at what time? At twilight. Let me tell you, God has perfect timing. Mm -hmm. They escaped at at twilight, they fled at twilight. Guess what God was doing? Over here, God was telling them to move in at twilight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The God we serve has perfect timing. Mm -hmm. He knows when your blessing is ready and right for you. Mm -hmm. God has perfect timing. So God tells them, these four leprous men, mm -hmm. to get up. They rose up at twilight. And while they were rising up, they were fleeing. Mm -hmm. 
while they were rising up, the enemy was getting out of Dodge. While they were getting up, let me tell you, God got perfect timing. And God has a way. Let me tell you, you may, and, and the old folk would tell you, you may not see God when he's moving, but he's moving behind the scene. He's doing things that you don't know he's doing it. You just stay with the Lord so you can understand what he's doing on your behalf. Yeah. God has perfect timing. God has perfect timing, so much so until he's waiting to bless you anyway. Huh. He has perfect time. You gotta wait on God. That's it. Isaiah says, "Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They, they will walk and faint not. And, and when the young folk fall out, you, your old self, will still be running." Right. <laughs> Woo! Good God Almighty. Good God. I, I remember Big Mama didn't have a third grade education, but she had a connection with God, and she didn't she didn't have all the right words, and she broke some. Burn and suck the grievance every now and then. But when she called on the Lord, the Lord answered her and blessed every last one of her great grandchildren. Right. From generation to generation. God has perfect time. God has perfect time. God has perfect time. And God has perfect time. And then when they got there, God has set them up. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you right now God can set you up. It's a setup, baby. It's a setup, brother. Just, just hang in there. It's a setup. God has a way of setting up the camp for you. David says that God will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. What David is really saying, God will throw a banquet with you being the guest of honor while your enemies look on. God has a way of preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. He's setting up a banquet just on your behalf. And all you have to do is come in like Brandon said, stretch your stuff. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is come in and be swamped with it. Huh. All you have to do is show up in all, and, and they will talk about you and say, look at her. Look at him in all of his glory. No, it's not my glory. It's God's glory. Yeah. And you make sure you give God the glory. And when, when they got there, when they got there, they rose up, they fled at twilight. I'm in, in verse number seven, they fled at, fly, at twilight, and they left the camp intact. They left their tents, they left their horses, they left their donkeys, and they fled for their life. Let me just tell you, God will always turn this thing around on your behalf. God has a way of turning things around on your behalf. You see, the enemy is going to attack you. But the Bible says they will flee from you because God will enable them to flee. And leave all of their blessings. Just you. People ask the question. Well, well, how do you know God's going to bless you? Well, if God doesn't bless me directly, he's going to bless me through my enemies. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? I said, I'm not worried about God's blessing. I'm not worried about how, how the price of food goes up. I'm not worried about how high gas continues to strut skyrocket. I'm not, I'm not worried about whether or not I can go and, and look at the shelf. Let me tell you, I went to the store the other day and one of my friends in Mississippi told me, he, he posted something and he took pictures of, of bacon shelves. And he said, it looks like the grocery store needs to go to the grocery store. <laughs> he said, the grocery store needs to go to the grocery store. And back home, we were calling it the grocery store needs to make groceries. And it doesn't matter how many empty shells there are. God will bless you even through your enemies. Look at what God did. God enabled the enemies. God enforced the enemies' effort to leave their tents, to leave everything they own just to bless these four lepers. He says, he says they left their tents, they left their horses, everything was intact. They left their donkeys because they were fleeing for their lives. Now here they are, a, a army, running from four leprous men that are, that are poor, broke, diseased, and weak. Let me tell you, it's not in your strength. It's not in your might. It's by God's spirit, yes. says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not your strength. You, you, you can pop iron all day. It's not your strength. Because let me tell you, one of the greatest of all time, Ronnie Coleman, Ronnie Coleman, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. I mean, he could just flex his finger and muscles just pop all over the place. <coughs> because he was a power lifter, lifter. He was a police officer. But now he's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. 
Earl Cameron used to bowl over people. Yeah. But now he can't walk on his own. Right. Let me tell you, you may be high today. Mm -hmm. But just keep waking up in the morning. Yeah. You need to pray, God, keep me. God bless me. Trust in what God has to do and not what man has to do. So they flee for their lives. They fled for their lives. And finally, in verse number 8, the Bible says they went in to one tent. They got silver, gold, food, and drink. They began to eat. Then they took it and they stashed it. Remind me of church folk. <laughs> they took it and they stashed it. And then they go into another tent. They, they take it and they, they stash it. But when you continue to read the pericope, you will find out that they were not selfish with their blessings. When you continue to read, you will find out. They said, this is far too much for us. This is something that we need to share. So they went into the city, and they told the other king, and they told the other people in the city, y'all, come on out of here. Our enemies have left enough for all of us. <laughs> I just want to let you know that not only will God bless you, God will also bless those who are connected. God has a way of blessing you in order to bless those who are connected to you. God has a way of blessing you so that you can go tell somebody else about your blessing. God has a way of blessing you and he will bless you in surplus. That's what he did on Calvary. He blessed us greatly. On Calvary's cross, Jesus blessed us spiritually that we can bless others spiritually. Mm -hmm. yeah. On Calvary's cross, Jesus took a tree. Yes, he did. Only a tree and three nails. Mm -hmm. He died on Calvary. Yeah. He was blessing us abundantly. Yeah. Far above what we can ask, far above what we can think. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ blessed us. Mm -hmm. He died on Calvary's hill. Mm -hmm. he made it out. He gave up the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Yes. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it too long. He was yes. blessing us with surplus. Early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth. And earth. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. He will help you. You gotta trust him. Make that choice today. Don't wait till next Sunday. Don't wait till you get it right. Trust Jesus today. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. The door is open. If you never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to just lead you to Christ. And you can do that by just bowing your head with me and inviting Him into your life. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home or you're in between church homes. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Will you come? If you're watching us by internet, we invite you to inbox us and let, you, let us know you want to join this great church in Southeast Houston. But Jesus is the captain of this church. 
you have received Jesus Christ, inbox us and let us know that you have received him. We want to rejoice with you and celebrate with you. We have one who has come.
want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Texas. 
Bob, we call him Bob, but of course his name is Waller. Bob and Betty Funberger. On, on yesterday, they celebrated 67 years of marriage. I said 67 years. 67 years of marriage. So we celebrate with, with Bob and Betty uh, Funberger. We will continue to pray for them. I said 67 years. Amen. A whole heap of years. 67 years that God has blessed them. Uh, and we want to thank God for them. For being a godly example of marriage. For being godly examples. What marriage really all looks like. We got a chance to hear a 67 year old story of how they got together. On yesterday. I mean he went back 67 years. Bob Funberg is getting ready to celebrate 85 years his birthday. His birthday in April, he'll be 85 years old. He was born in a good week, a good month, a good time. He was born April 17th. April 17th. He'll be celebrating 85 years. You know, that's two days after April 15th. So he was born. He was born on April. April 17th, so he'll be celebrating, be celebrating 85 years, 85 year birthday. Hallelujah. Sister Davis, will you come without me? Church. 
Let the church Thank you, Hazelin. Thank you, Braylon. Thank you, also. 